Hey everybody, I am heading into Boston, well close to Boston. Jay had a work event. Say hi Jay. Hi. The surest way to get filmed husbands out there is to tell your wife not to film you, and then they always do. <laughs> he loves being on camera. Don't let him fool you. No, he really doesn't at all. We are heading towards Boston. Jay has a work event. He's dropping me off at a thrift store, and I'm gonna bring you with me. We'll see what we can get. The last time I was at this thrift store, um, at this hour, they were bringing out a lot of clothes. It's it's almost three o'clock and I typically am not here this late in the day. So hopefully we'll get some good deals. And um, yeah, hopefully you will be my good luck charm. So let's go thrifting. Here I am just getting the lay of the land. I always take a few laps around the store when I'm getting started. Does it take you time to settle in? It definitely takes me time to find my rhythm. Top's not my favorite section to shop in, but I have noticed in my stats that tops are my like number one selling item. I just think people can pick them up for a more affordable price than say, outerwear or leather shoes or things like that. So they're just like an easy $20 to $30 sale. I've had an interest in looking at these Patagonia branded items because Patagonia has stopped selling them with company logos. The theory is that the pieces are less likely to be recycled if they have a company logo on them, which is for the most part true. I'm far less likely to pick up a Patagonia with a company brand than I am when it's on its own. In my early days, I would pick them up. Now I'm leaving them behind. But now there's a new trend that if people do want a company logo and they can't get it through Patagonia anymore, the value on certain branded logoed sweatshirts are actually increasing. I just don't know enough to pick them up. These are Lucky Brand Ballet Flats, um, which have become kind of just a bins pickup for me. They used to sell really well for me, um, but even at $5, I decided to leave them behind at the store. Third Love Bras, I'm always happy to find. Their intimate section here is just $1.99 for bras. This was something I was very happy to find. I was looking at bras and looked across and saw the wooden heel and caught the Fry logo out of the corner of my eye. Really great pickup for $5. I thought these were super cute and they are vintage Esprit. They kind of have that dark academia vibe and the shorts here are $3.99, but I left those behind. I kind of wished I grabbed them. Their Halloween section was in full force over here. I didn't spend much time over there, but I just did a quick walk through. And then I looked at some of the hard goods. Scary little snake, clearly did not buy that. I thought this was really cute with a little pumpkin pie lid. I think that was $5.99. I'm just so terrible with breakables. I take them home and I rarely list them, but I did find something today that I'm gonna show you that I'm definitely gonna list. I've been scanning a lot of new with tag items um, for Amazon, and if they scan for a decent price and they are new and I am ungated, I will pick them up. I've been having some success with that at the bins as well. I thought this little wreath was really interesting for Halloween enthusiasts. I thought that was cute. Much more of a Christmas decoration girl. <laughs> um, I kind of wait till Halloween is over so I could just start celebrating Christmas. Checked out the jeans here. I did find a good pair early on. I don't typically pick up Hudson. Jeans here are $6.99. So not expensive for the right pair of jeans, but not super cheap. So I'm definitely selective about the jeans that I pick up here. Um, there is a pair of Miss Me jeans coming up, and I do pick up Miss Me jeans that are all blinged out. And I thought these were particularly interesting because they had little angel wings. I've never seen those before, but unfortunately was missing that little section, so I left them behind. But those I thought were really cool for Miss Me jeans. The quality of these clogs were really great and the comps were somewhere between $35 and $50, but there was some damage to that back heel. I carried them around with me forever and then at the register decided to leave them behind, which I've been trying to do more often, like take one or two things and just take them out of my cart at the very end. 
This Good Vibe sweatshirt from Chaser is really cute. I snagged that for $3.99. Do you guys do that? Leave things in your cart and then decide at the very end, right at the bitter end. I loved this moth sweater, love those dolman sleeves. This is a John Varvados shirt that I decided to grab for men. This is a vintage silk scarf by Ann Klein. I was really, thought that this was a pretty pattern. $2.99 for their scarves, so I grabbed that. And these were just some ankle booties with some really nice chunky soles. The quality of these were beautiful. And the brand surprised me. They were Eileen Fisher. I've never sold their boots before, so I tried those. This is a, what I believe is a bootleg, AKA not authentic, sweatshirt, Gucci from the 90s. But I was really thrown off because I thought the quality was so nice and I wanted it so bad to be real. It also had a tag that was stitched in nice and it said, you can't really tell, but it said it was made in Italy. Oh, I wanted this to be real, but I don't think it is. The good news is that this is authentic and it is a very high-end brand, Moncler, best known for their outerwear. This is just a gorgeous silk piece. I was very excited to find that. Definitely took that home. This Zara dress is magnificent. It's got a crop t-shirt underneath. I just love it. One of my favorite pieces of the day. And then I do check out kids outerwear. I found these cute little hunter boots with these sparkles. They're missing some sparkles, but they were 99 cents. I just make sure I see the size before I buy them. These are the breakables I was talking about. This is part of a nativity set made in 1951 in West Germany. It's a company owned by Hummel and uh, the, the comps were just fantastic. So I was excited to grab those. All right, time for the haul, everyone. Today's haul is from my favorite little honey hole outside of Boston. It is under new ownership. So the past few trips that I've been there haven't been the best, but this last one was really good. And there are things that I'm just getting used to. Things are in all different places in the store. Uh, they used to have a discount system built in that they no longer have, which is a bummer. But I'm getting used to the new system. It always takes some time and I'm finding things that I like a little bit better and then things that I really miss about the old way. But the location of it is great and they just get some really incredible donations. This was my slip from the last time I shopped. I got 37 items for $127. But I also have a bag of things from the time before. So I'm combining the two. And the other time that I went, I spent like $135. So this is over $250 worth of stuff to share with you. I'm adjusting the camera a little bit here because I have this giant um, Ikea bag on my desk with some of these things. And I'm gonna move my coffee, take one more sip. I'm always so worried I'm gonna get coffee on my stuff. All right, so first up are these We The Free curvy cropped. Well, they're ankle length with like the chewed hem, raw hem. These are a size 27 and the jeans here are $6.99. They have like standard pricing for everything, not like savers where you just like roll the dice and don't know what you're gonna pay. Um, but I have sold these once before, I believe in black and they sold for decent money. I do like picking those jeans up. Oh, I found three Robert Graham shirts. Actually, I found like four or five. One of them was white and I decided to leave it behind. And there was another one that may have had some damage. But Robert Graham is a men's brand and I think it used to sell for a little bit more than it does now. But kind of my rule of thumb with Robert Graham is the more wild, the better. That seems to be uh, what brings in the most money. But I don't know enough about the brand to know if these are good patterns or not. I believe these are all larges and extra large. This is like purple. And then the cool thing about Robert Graham stuff is they always have a really fun pattern on the inside. There's the label um, and over here on the cuff, there's some detail right here. So the shirts here are $5.99 for like blouses and men's button down shirts. So I got this one, this is an extra large. I also got this one. This has like those deeper colors, all kind of like purple here. This is just a large. One of them has a really cool, this almost looks like a kaleidoscope. Little baby paisleys actually. It may be further down in the bag, but one of the shirts, when you turn the cuff up, it has like all masquerade faces. It's kind of 
kind of fun and different. Um, this is the pattern on the inside here. So I'm hoping that if there's somebody who's interested in Robert Graham and they come to my closet, they will be able to see that I have a few available. This is an extra large classic fit. And I think I have these all listed around $45. I always find pieces from Aritzia at this store and it makes me so happy. This is a Wilfred skirt, which is sold at Aritzia and it's just this gorgeous midi like dark academia plaid pencil skirt it's just beautiful it's a size four it's received a lot of attention but it has not sold yet um, i think i have this listed for 75 dollars this retails for over 130 i believe and so i have it listed at 75 and i've been sending out a lot of offers for 60 with discounted shipping it will probably end up selling between 50 and 60 dollars if i had to guess but it's perfect season for that i love that brand while we're talking about aritzia i'll show these pants which are also sold at that store this is babaton which is another brand that they carry uh, these are just like trousers high-waisted and I did find stock photos on both of these. I think they're relatively current pieces. This has like a little side zip, just very classic, beautiful pants. And these are stretch wool cashmere woven in Italy, really nice quality. And these are a size six. So now this is a brand that uh, I've sold once before and then I've passed on it a few times because the first time I sold it, it didn't do very well. I think it made my like list of like worst sales of the year recently. Um, but this is the brand, Fakonable. I, I know I'm saying that wrong. For reference in France and French, this is said as Fasonable. Fasonable. It's a size large. This is a men's like flannel shacket. It's absolutely beautiful. I have this priced at just $50, which I think is very fair for this. It's a really substantial piece. And um, I think I got like a $25 offer on it or something that was low. You good, Lucky? Did you get that itch? <laughs> I got these suede slippers and this is a designer I'd never heard before, heard of before, uh, but they're made by Patricia Green. And I was really impressed by some of the comps here. This is a new thing that they do at this store is they put a sticker on the back that corresponds to like uh, when the item came in. These are just these beautiful suede slippers in like kind of like in, they're almost like a purplish brown, like an eggplant color. Um, and they're in excellent condition. I think these are a size six. They have a padded footbed and I have these priced at $45. And all the shoes at this store cost $5 unless otherwise priced, but um, I did not pay up for these. These were just $5. Also, I grabbed these Jack Rogers shoes. Um, I, I loved these. I, I'm a big fan of leopard print and these are like a calf hair leopard print uh, sandal. So a little out of season, but these are just so nice. And what do I have these priced? I have these priced at $55 and they are a size nine. They'll probably sell somewhere between 40 and $50. Um, but yeah, I like this classic Jack Rogers style. All right, I gotta let Lucky out. While we're on the subject of shoes, we'll keep going. I thought these were really nice too. These are Fit Flop. I don't always like the style of Fit Flop, but I feel like these are done really well with this really soft leather and uh, they just have the crossover in the front. So I have these priced at $60. Fit Flops I can really get a decent amount of money for. My most frustrating story recently about flip Fit Flops is I had a pair of New With Tag that sold for full price for $75 and I couldn't find them. Still haven't found them to this day. Um, and I had to cancel that order, so I was very sad. But anyways, I love these. And these I just thought were gorgeous, men's shoes. Uh, the brand is Ben Sherman. Uh, you know, Ben Sherman is one of those brands that I haven't really picked up historically. I see the brand a lot and I feel like it is like a higher end brand. But usually when I run the comps, I decide to, to not grab it, whether it's a shirt or a sweater, but these were just beautiful. They are like a mix. It's like a shiny leather with suede right here. Um, and again, the comps on these weren't fantastic, but I just thought these shoes were beautiful. I figured if they didn't sell, I think they're J and Anthony size. Um, they are a size nine, so maybe a little bit tight for them, but they look like they run big. Probably have these priced around $50 if I had to guess. They're so nice. 
This is Eileen Fisher, also another brand that I always find at this store. And I really liked this piece. It's not a color that I always gravitate towards, but here it is, 3X. I loved that it was a larger size. I have this priced at $50. I received a $25 offer yesterday and I countered at 40 and they declined. This is in excellent condition. It is mostly cotton, but I think there's a little cashmere in here as well. And yeah, it's a size 3X. I paid $5.99 for it. So I'm hoping to get somewhere between $35 and $40 for this. These are smart wool base layer leggings. And I usually price these smart wool pants at like between $50 and $60. They retail for over $100 depending on the style of them. So somebody has asked me, you know, like what the warmth is. Like there's a number attached to it. And there's a pair of leggings that can be worn on their own. And then there's like a lighter weight pair that can be worn as a layer. And I've been researching it. This is the second pair I have found. And um, they are merino wool. Oh my gosh, every time I see this little guy, I get pretty excited. This is the second or third pair of pants I've had. They haven't sold yet. My other ones I have priced at 60. I wanna hold out a little bit as we head into colder weather to see if they will sell at a higher price because I do really well with smart wool. This is the other Robert Graham shirt. I'm so glad it was here because it's a pretty cool one. I th think this one is my favorite. This is the pattern on it, which is really cool. Robert Graham shirts are very interesting, I think. Look at the masquerade faces on the cuff. I just think it's so cool. And this one also has like a little layer of detail on the inside button. There is a chance that I'm missing a couple things from this particular haul, which was my first round. But um, like I said, that one wasn't as exciting as the one that I just had this past weekend. Now we are going to switch gears and we are gonna go into like the the receipt that I just showed you, that was $127. I just gotta clean my area here so I can move on to the next segment. Everything here should be listed by the time you go. I've, that's been like my new habit. I've been trying to do that and it's been working out really well. These were in my thrift with me portion. These are just fry and I saw this little logo from across the way. I love this blush color on the suede. They're very subtle toe prints, which I never like. I always try to get them out, but the shoe itself looks like brand new. It's in really excellent condition. And this is a size eight and a half. Probably priced these around $60. It's a little bit of story time. I promise it will be quick. I've mentioned before on this channel that I watch this woman, Sophie Sofet. I don't, I don't really know how to pronounce her last name. She was recently talking about luxury handbags that you could get for under a certain price point. And she talked about this brand, Off-White, and it had these arrows. I knew the brand Off-White, but I didn't really realize that this was their uh, logo. I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I would like that on a handbag, those crisscross like arrows, but cool. You know, she was saying that the, the quality was good. Two days later or a day later, I'm shopping and I spot this hat. It's just like all the $1.99 hats, like, you know, with the Patriots hats and the team hats that are local sports. And I said, oh my gosh, I think that's off-white. I think that's a good brand. So I grabbed it and then I noticed it had kind of this like funky little rubber tag over here that says Ablo and then it says auto collection. But I mean, it is literally like a lightweight trucker hat, like something you feel like you could get down at the corner store or Kmart. The comps on this are between 150 and 195. I have never been so excited to see a little streetwear flat hat in my life and it's in excellent condition. Um, it is so great. In fact, I showed my son Rocco and all of his buddies and someone's like, oh my God, can I buy that off of you? Like, I didn't realize this was a brand that kids liked. I was so confused by this, but oh my gosh, this is the pick of the day. This little hat retailed for like 240 or 340, something crazy. I think it's from 2019. The hat was a huge shock to me and there is 100% no way that I would have even looked at that hat had I not seen Sophie's video the day before and took note of that logo. So sometimes things are just meant to be. I took a chance on this uh, this is Gucci and it is from the 90s. It does say made in Italy and it has like a little mediums 
tag, which is a different color, and there, there are no tags up here. So it's likely not authentic, but I still thought it was a really cool sweatshirt, and it's still vintage. It's definitely from the 90s, so I thought it was really cool either way. Obviously way cooler if it's real. This I got for a present for my son Rocco's best friend, Marcus. He is captain of the golf team. And this is a little Tommy Bahama golf, um, like zip around. It's a player's golf log. So it has like a little thing here so you can keep all your stats from your game. And then over here, it's got like a little spot for pencil and you can probably put tees right in here, I'm guessing. So this was really cute. This was $2.99. I picked this up based on style. It's, it's vintage, it's Anne Klein. And did anybody watch um, Halston on Netflix, the story of Halston? One of the designers they mentioned quite a bit is Anne Klein. And I, I just think that Anne Klein in the 70s and 80s was a big deal. And so her vintage stuff, I do pay attention to. This is 100% silk. Here's the tag. It's beautiful. It almost looks like fireworks, starburst. But if you come in close, you can see the flowers. It's just a really beautiful piece and it's in excellent condition. So I might list this around $30 because it's vintage and it's beautiful and it's 100% silk. So that was just one of those that I'm like, you know what, for $3, I think I'm gonna grab that. This is just some Marilyn Monroe playing cards. I would have left these behind, but they were bicycle. And when Rocco was little, he used to collect um, card sets. And I mean, he'd probably appreciate Marilyn Monroe now more as a 17 year old than he would when he was little. Uh, but I thought these were really cool. The resale on these is like eight to $15. So this would be a really easy thing to list and sell, but we might keep those. They were 99 cents. I got two uh, Third Love bras. They are in larger sizes and Third Love, I keep saying Third Love is such a great brand, but I've now listed two or three Third Love bras and one sold a while back, but I haven't sold my new one. This is a 44C, that's the size. And I think the other one is two Third Love. This is like a catalog order or an online bra company and they're, they're known for their real quality bras and for an exceptional fit. So I do love picking those up. Oh, I got these panels. And they're just um, Opal House, which is sold at Target. It's their own label. But I loved the print on these panels. And it's like a light pink. Kind of want to use them somewhere in the house. I just don't know where I would use them. Just a very bohemian vibe and really beautiful. These were $1.99 a panel, so I paid $4 and I checked the comps on them too in case I don't keep them. And I think new, there was one panel sold new for $24.99. So I'm thinking if I sell the set of two, um, I could probably list them for like $39 or 45 or something around there. So now I'm to the point where I have all things on hangers. This is a brand I've never picked up before. It's called Kappa, K-A-P-P-A. -P -P I've seen it quite a bit. Um, I think the first person who I saw picking this up was Savannah from Street Savvy. I feel like Savannah has some pretty good knowledge on like street brands. And I've passed on it. I've seen pants before where it's got like the the back-to-back -back people like down the side of the arm. I don't know, for whatever reason, it was either condition or they were priced up that I just didn't pick them up. Well, this was just on the rack for $3.99 because that's what they charge for sweatshirts here. It's like no other. Um, so I did a Google search on this, the Google um, lens where I just took a picture and it showed me this piece and they don't make this anymore. Some of the sold comps and this was like $85. I have this priced at $110 because I couldn't find a single one online that was exactly this available. So I have one like on it and I sent an offer for like $85 with discounted shipping. I know nothing about this brand, so it may sit for a while. One thing that made me price it high was on one similar to this in a different color. It was either on eBay or Grail. This is like a Depop Grail kind of brand. Um, somebody had written in the comments, yeah, I love this sweatshirt. Um, I need this colorway for my collection, or I have two of the other colorways, this is the only one I need. And it was there was just something about the way the person phrased it, like people are kind of seeking out certain pieces from this line and it made me feel like it was like a collectible in a way, do you know what I mean? Like something that people are looking for. Anyways, 
hopefully it does well. And on the heels of that, this, this had come out on a rack and this was on the same rack. And um, if you could feel these sweatshirts, the weight of them is so heavy. So when I looked at this one, this one is called Talentless. I was like, that's kind of funny. The thickest, nicest quality sweatshirt you can imagine. Never heard of Talentless either. All the kids have heard of these brands, by the way. And it says, please wash your hands. So when I Google lens this piece, um, Scott Disick, who is uh, Kourtney Kardashian's ex-husband, was wearing this. There was another celebrity who was wearing this brand. I think this particular sweatshirt was really popular during the pandemic. I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but anyways, this sweatshirt retails for $129. I saw some comps, I wanna say like in the 60s or 70s, I can't remember exactly where, but I'm probably gonna price this at $80 crazy for sweatshirts. I love, I mean, I personally like hoodies and the fact that this place only sells them for $3.99, I always spend a lot of time looking because I always find brands like this in their section. Although this was a new rack, it wasn't even on their normal hoodie rack. So two new brands to me, I'm very excited to sell between the two of them. I'm hoping, you know, that we will be over $100 um, when they both sell, which is very exciting. Okay, Wilt. This is, is this an Aritzia brand? I don't know if it is. It looks like it would be, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, I have sold Wilt before. It's not a really fast mover. I think it's more of like a lagged look, um, you know, easy, minimalist, cotton style brand. Um, this again, $3.99, because it was in the sweatshirt shirt section. I liked the color of it. I liked the high low hem and then this like little sheer part at the bottom just a scoop neck i also got a black wilt piece at the store and it's more tunicky it's longer but i'll show that to you this probably retails for 110 dollars so pretty excited about that next up is an eileen fisher piece this is really nice this is all cotton well like a cotton blend and it has some texture to it and this is pretty unique for what i what I typically find for Eileen Fisher. I thought this was a really nice style. It's like a blush pink. It is a size medium Eileen with like a nice collar and it has like this split little seam in the back. Um, so it kind of A-lines out a nice flattering fit on this. It has like a couple uh, pulls in the fabric. So I might have to price it down a little bit. Very, very minor, but um, it might bring down the value a little. Um, I got this chaser. So I had to change my memory card. Sorry about that. I was talking about this little chaser good vibes sweatshirt. Chaser always has, if, if you're unfamiliar with the brand, it has a very distressed look to it. It looks like very pilly, but that's the nature of the design. I just loved the rainbow on this for $3.99. Uh, I don't get a ton for chaser, but I think it's a fun brand. There is the, there's the tag. Uh, I think it's cute probably sell this for about $25. I love it. Okay. Grabbed this sweater. It's nice having things on hangers. This is from the brand Moth, which is sold at Anthropology. Um, I don't pick up all Moth pieces, but I liked this. I love the color of it. I loved the dolman sleeves. It was a size medium and really nice condition. There weren't many available online. I just thought it was really pretty, really excellent condition. It's got a boat neck. So I think I have this priced around $38 or $40. This was debatable because I have a love-hate relationship with Club Bonico. I feel like lately it's been more hate-hate because -hate <laughs> it just hasn't sold for me lately. But this looked like it was one of their newer pieces. This is a wool, uh, there we go. I'm pretty sure it's men's. And I haven't tried selling men's Club Monaco, but it still had this. It looks like it's brand new. I was really hoping that it would be on the website, but I didn't see anything. And yeah, I think it's a current piece. So I think with Club Monaco, the one thing that like got me hooked on the brand was I found, um, it was almost like Angora feeling, but I don't know if it was Angora, but a really beautiful black sweater, very simple at the bins in Boston. So it was a couple years ago because they've been closed for a while. And it was on their current website and it sold for a hundred dollars. 
within a week. It was a really quick flip and for $100. And I was like, wow, I'm hooked. And then I bought a lot of Club Monaco. And for the most part, my Club Monaco sits. They don't accept it at the real real. And so it's just one of those brands, like sometimes they have a hard time moving it, but I haven't tried to sell men's before. I did purchase a button down um, collarless shirt that I believe is men's, but it's very wrinkled. And I even went as far as having Caitlin take pictures of it, but I'm sending it to Thread Up. I'm not gonna sell it on my own. Um, but I'm gonna try this and see how it does. Can't make any promises on that one. All right, this was the first thing I picked up when I got here for this trip and I said, ooh, it's gonna be a good trip. These are some Madewell jeans. They are the cropped, um, these have already been photographed, so I gotta start putting these away. They're the Curvy Cali Demi Boo in a 32 Petite. I've never seen Petite sold um, at Madewell, but I suppose they have them, but the 32 size is fantastic. And the Cali Demi Boot is one of their um, popular styles. So I was really excited to find these and it's, it's a newer, everything about it was kind of like a newer vibe. I would say like 2019 or newer, but I was very excited about those. Those are the only jeans that I picked up. This dress I actually got, I believe the last time I was there, but um, I haven't listed it yet. Have I shown this yet? No, I, there's no way I showed this. This is a helmet laying dress. So here's the, here's the tag. And Helmet Lang, I feel like recently is like frame and like mother. It's like one of those mid-tier nice brands that sometimes sits, but I still get excited when I see it. Like All Saints, there's like this category of brands that still really excite me when I find them and sometimes they just sit. The stock photos of this are really pretty. Uh, the issue with this, which I didn't realize until I got home, is that this little piece right here is separated. This is like a faux leather. Let's see how that is separated with the stitching, which I don't think is the biggest deal. I need This is a size zero if anybody's interested. I need to get this on a mannequin to take pictures because it, it just doesn't do it justice, just hanging there. And their dresses are $8.99. So I have to really like a dress in order to buy it at this store because it's just on the pricier side. I have to repair that or I just have to list it as is and take the hit and know that I'm not gonna get as much money for it. Either way, I was excited about that. This is the other dress, which is like caught. Um, and I love this. This is Zara. It's Zara Woman and it is like this mixed pattern and it's got a cropped like t-shirt underneath that's built in. It's got this cool little collar here. And in the center, it says my own muse. It's a nice long maxi dress. The comps on this dress weren't fantastic. There was one for $35, there was one for 29. Um, but I, I just think it's worth more, I really do. I think it's this tremendous dress and there aren't many, if any, available now. Maybe there's one other dress listed. So I listed this a little bit higher. I think I listed this around $45. I just think this is really current and I feel like somebody would absolutely love this now. And it's silky, silky fabric. Um, there's a little bit of like a hem in the front that kind of comes up. It's just, there's so much going for this dress. I absolutely loved this Zara piece. So I was willing to pay up for it. Knowing the comps weren't that great, I just think it's worth more money than the comps are saying. Comps aren't always everything. So they are definitely a great guide, but sometimes if I find a piece and I'm like, no, that's worth a little bit more, I will price it high. The worst thing that can happen is if you price something a little bit high, it sits for a long time. I always say that the market will dictate your prices. So. If you have something listed and it's sitting forever, you may need to adjust your price or you may just need to wait for the right buyer. Sometimes if you price yourself out, you're, you just move a lot less product. This is another men's shirt. This is just John Varvatos and it's a short sleeved floral pattern. I can come in and you can see just a short sleeve light cotton button down. Um, and when I did a little research on this, this was sold at Nordstrom Rack. There are some still available at Nordstrom Rack, so that is always like, ooh, they have it priced maybe at $45, and that's probably what I wanted to price it at, but it retails for $128. This is one of those pieces that if somebody digs a little deeper, they might be able to find it for, uh, you know, brand new for a really good price. I think I priced mine at 40. 
and hoping to sell between 30 and 35. You know, um, I could leave it at 45 and just wait till Nordstrom Rack sells out and then sit on this a little bit longer. Um, but I don't, I don't know that I really want to. I, I do like having stuff in my men's closet. I do like selling men's brands. This is a new to me brand, which is not surprising. I always find new stuff here. This is Laura Urbanati. I'm gonna show the tag here. I believe they accept this at The Real Real. I feel like there weren't many comps on this brand. Um, this is just like a silk blend patterned blouse, really nice, so I paid $5.99 for it. So her stuff is priced at The Real Real for like $60, $64. My guess is that this retails for, you know, $180 to $200 retail. Wow, so on her eShop, if you just go directly to Laura Urbanati's website, her blouses sell for $538, $451, $471, $511. Wow. Clearly the resale is not going to come anywhere close to that if the real real has them priced at $60. But yeah, that's a really nice brand. Um, so I don't know, maybe $50 to $75 for that, which I would be really excited about. This is the other Wilt piece, which is really nice. I love this piece. This is a very Lori friendly kind of A-line, fun tunic at the bottom. There's the tag again, Wilt. That's just a size medium. I'm gonna show you the shoes that I got and then I'm gonna end with a, a, a pretty exciting piece, I think. I do love buying shoes here because they are $5. Kids shoes are just 99 cents. How adorable are these? Little baby hunter boots. Paid 99 cents for these hunter boots. They're so cute. I have them priced at 35 I think they retail for $49. They already have like four or five likes on them. There's a little bit of wear on the sparkle on the toe, but they're in overall good condition. These were Eileen Fisher little boots, which I haven't had the best luck selling Eileen Fisher shoes, but these are like brand new and they zip on the inside and it's kind of like this little elastic-y type of I even, I liked the lace detail there, but it zips. I tried these on, they were slightly big for me. I'm somewhere between an eight and a half and a nine, and these were a nine, so I thought they were gonna fit great, and I thought these would just be so cute, um, but they were just slightly big, which is weird, because I tried on the fry ones, and those were tight, those were an eight and a half, so. And these shoes were just kind of sitting there, kind of unassuming, and these are John Varvatos and I was excited to grab these. So the same brand as the shirt. I don't know if you can see it if I go like this. Can't tell with the light in my eyes. The bottom of these was kind of interesting. Um, there's some gunk right there that I need to get off. But uh, other than that, they're in really beautiful condition, a really soft leather. So I only got a few pairs of shoes um, on this round. And last but certainly not least is this beautiful silk blouse, this floral silk blouse and I think the designer of this may surprise you. I've only found this designer one other time. It was at the bins and um, it was a it was a jacket, which they're known for, and it sold for $250, um, but it's Montclair. I was so thrilled to find this brand. There we are, see, Montclair, absolutely stunning. I was shocked, shocked to find this, and also shocked to see it in a blouse. I mean, I think Montclair is known for their winter gear and their jackets. Uh, when I was looking for a winter coat, um, I was at Nordstrom and the woman recommended I look at Montclair. And I was like, um, thanks for showing me these, but I'm all set. They were so expensive, you know, a couple thousand dollars for a winter coat. Um, but anyways, this is beautiful. I couldn't find this exact one online. Uh, but I'm definitely going to price this high. I'm thinking between 60 and and $100. I'm gonna give a big range because I need to research it a little bit more, but it's a size medium, I believe, and it is gorgeous. So between the Montclair and the off-white hat, the Madewell jeans and the Zara dress and the Aritzia brands and the Robert Graham for men, like I just always find really solid brands here. 
Um, and I don't share my location on this one. If you go back in some of my videos, I have talked about this place before. So if you really want to research it, you could. But I'm just happy that I'm back to having a positive experience at the store and um, finding some great brands. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what your favorite piece was. I feel like I had quite a variety in here. Oh, I want to show you the nativity set. If you want to stick around for two more seconds, I want to show you this nativity set. When Rocco was a little baby, his godmother started him on Fontini pieces, which are made in Italy. They're resin figurines, so they're, they're not breakable. They're like a hard plastic made in Italy. And she would buy him a piece for his nativity set every year for Christmas. So these were across from me and I looked at them quickly and I said, oh, that looks like Fontini. And then I went over, I hope I'm saying that right. It might be Fonta Fontani, I'm not sure. But I went over and looked, I'm like, oh no, these are like ceramic. These are, these are, oh Jesus, don't break this. <laughs> no pun intended. This is Gobel, G-O-E-B-E-L, and it's made in West Germany. There's the uh, stamp on it. So as soon as I saw West Germany, I was like, oh, this is something good. And it's signed here. This is Joseph. This is Mary. And then I have baby Jesus. And then I also have this like shepherd. So I did like a quick look while I was in the store and the Virgin Mary was sold for $62 recently on eBay, just this figure. Um, so I was actually just doing the math in my head really quickly. I think baby Jesus sells for the least amount because I think there's quite a few of him out there. I think these are a subsidiary brand of Hummel. And there were also these two little angels there. Um, one of them has a broken wing. These guys look more like Hummels. Um, but these were all together. So the two little guys and Jesus were 99 cents a piece. And then the larger statues were $2.99 a piece. So I paid three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12 for all of the pieces. And I am hoping to, you know, the larger pieces, I think on average will sell for about $45 a piece. So I'm hoping that this nativity set will pay for the entire second haul, which was $127. I also think it's a great time to sell the nativity set going into Christmas. Um, I don't think these little Hummel guys will do much. Um, I'm not, I haven't even priced those out. But anyways, I was super excited to get these and give them a try. It's always fun to try some new things. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you've ever heard of that brand. Okay, that's really it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know this was a longer video, but I had some really exciting things I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more from me. I release a couple videos a week and I hope you enjoy them. So thanks everybody so much. I will see you back soon. Love you guys, bye.